Hey guys, my name is Blaze and welcome to part, I think it's six or seven? I'm pretty sure it's seven, part seven of my ongoing RPG tutorial series. I've, I, I went and got a haircut yesterday and I think it looks terrible, but uh, I already paid for it when I went, so I'm gonna have to live with it for a few weeks. But let's keep going. I think I'm recording, I hope I'm recording. And in the last video, what we did was we created our AI, our slime dude AI. In this video, what we're going to do is I'm going to teach you guys the basics of a concept known as polymorphism. Now, if you're not sure what polymorphism is, hmm, in simple terms, it's for you coding, programming, not coding, programming beginners. Polymorphism is basically when you take a script or an object and you change you give the programmer or you give yourselves the ability to change some aspects of it. So that's what we're going to do today, focus on that today. Uh, if I have time, I do have a clock here. If I have time to squeeze it in, I'll also do some, basically some directional movement for our enemy sprite as well. Because if you noticed in the last video, I actually did pre-import these extra sprites here and they're basically the same slime character but the animations or the directions that it's facing is slightly different but only if we had time i want to keep it to 15 minutes so let's get started all right the first thing that we do have is this object player i just want to give you guys some background information and basically here in the step event of the player we only have two lines of code we have this script execute here which executes a whatever state we're in. Right now we only have one state to work with, which is fine. And it plays a particular animation or it shows us a particular sprite depending on which direction we're facing, up, down, left, or right. And here we define where that state is in the create event or the default state. I'm just gonna change the speed to say one, just because uh, he moves a bit fast. But that's what we have here in our object player. In our object slime, we just have the create event, which we define the speed. I'll make this guy even slower than he already is. I think slimes move really slowly, so 0 0.25, super slow slime character. Here in the uh, actual uh, parent object for the enemy, we have all of the coding, all of the programming that goes into our AI, at least for all of our enemies. And we do a whole bunch of checks here. So we are first checking for the distance between the player and our enemy, um, both on the X and Y axis. And then we get the sign value of that. And then we do the standard move and collide. Now what we want to do is because we, we are already doing that check with the player, so maybe we can cut down on how many lines of code we've got and the way that we can do that is through polymorphism. You've probably already used this. If you've been following my tutorial videos or anybody's for that matter, you most likely use polymorphism without even knowing it's polymorphism. But uh, we're going to write our own script today. And that's not what it is. So let's open up the state idle script that we made a few videos back. I think it was in the first video actually. And let's have a look at what we do have in this script. So let me just expand that. So let's see what we've got. We've got the get input. And then we've got if x axis is not equals to zero, yep, we move or else we're idle. And then we change the direction based on that. And then down here, right at the bottom here, this bottom part here is where we actually do the movement. We actually move in this direction here. But the actual motion or the act of moving is just here in this chunk of code. What we want to do is actually isolate all of that into a single script on its own. And what we're going to do is we're going to put that script into both the player and the enemy states and we're going to get them to control each other or they, they will have the same code, but we're not rewriting code, we're not copy pasting, we're using polymorphism. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new script and I'm going to call mine, I'll call it a move uh, collide because that's essentially what we're doing with this script. Now, 
down here, I just want to make sure that there's space so that you guys can actually see. Down here, we're going to type in var. Use the var keyword. I, I got some, uh, some people asking for help with using var. Um, make sure that you do have a space between var and the actual variable name. Um, if you don't, it won't come up as a local variable. In this case, I will type x and you'll get an error. So the way to know that you have a local variable is assuming you're not colorblind is if your var keyword turns bold and if your actual variable name turns yellow. And I'm using default color scheme here. So if you have changed yours in any way, I'm sorry, I can't help you there. But uh, if you're using the default variables, uh, the default settings, then it should turn yellow for um, local. So var x is going to be argument zero, Let's start with zero. And we're going to do some the same thing for y. And we're going to use argument one. This third one is optional, actually, but uh, for the benefit of everybody that is watching this, your project might be slightly different. What we're going to do is var, and we're going to assign a target collision. So you can choose what you can actually collide with. So var object, yeah, var obj. And we're gonna set that to argument three. Whoops, argument two, not three. And basically what this does is when we reference the script, we can actually tell it what X and Y is. So what uh, movement uh, variables are going to be referring to and what object we want to actually collide with. Now I don't encourage this, but uh, to keep the video under 15 minutes, I am going to take all of our code from state idle, all of this collision code, and we're going to highlight this entire bottom section here so that if place meeting section, all the way down. Cut. And in your move and collide script, let me just move that across so you can see everything. In the move and collide script, we're just gonna paste that in. Like, I really do wanna make this a point. Please don't, please don't do what I do at a professional level. It's just, I just wanna save time and explanations. So for you guys, I, I really do discourage this. I know it's a bad example, but uh, just take my word for it. Your programming practice will thank you for it. So we need to change some of these things around because we don't want to be restricted to x-axis or y-axis or object collision. What we're going to do is instead, we're going to change each of these values here to the argument that we're going to check. So down here in x-axis, we're going to change that to underscore x following the, var the variable that we have up here. Um, and same for collision. So instead of object collision, we're just going to use underscore object, which is this variable up here, which we will assign when we call the script. And then again, x and underscore object. And again, it, this is all just repetition, um, most of this um, video. But the whole point of this is so that you can, when you write one script, you can use it across multiple objects, bullets, other enemies, NPCs, you don't have to worry. And it makes it super, super easy to streamline your code and get your project done faster. It's also a very, it's, I wanna say it's a very important aspect, but it is a major concept in object-oriented programming, which is what, more or less, what games are, object-oriented programming. Now we're changing the actual, the other one, which is y, the y-axis, so we're using underscore y instead of underscore x. And again, down here, y, and over here, object collision. We're gonna change that too. I do have an announcement. It's actually a really important announcement. I want you guys to watch it. Um, not sure when exactly I'll upload it, but it will definitely be over the next few days. So I encourage you guys to watch that and share it with whoever you feel might be interested in that. I don't want to give too much away now because let's stay on track.
So let's have a look at what we've changed here. I have changed almost all of the hard coding. So that red text that we had before with object collision, it's now nowhere. The only red text that we have here are the numbers, which is understandable. And all of the things like x-axis and the y-axis, that's all been changed to these local variables. Basically what I've done here is I've made a script that is extremely flexible. You can change it to suit whatever function you want. And it doesn't just work with move and collide. It can work with any kind of script, as long as you know what it's supposed to do. <laughs> That's the other thing. That's very important that you know that. So let's go back up to our state idle. And what we're going to do is down here at the bottom, we are going to reference move and collide. Now we type move, collide, let autofill do its thing. And then down here, we're going to put in x-axis, I put that wrong, and then we're going to type in y-axis as well. And we need a third, um, third object or a third thing to reference. Let's just say, for example, I only want to be able to collide with enemies, or I only want to be able to collide with object collision. That's where you'll put that. So let, let's, so let's just show you par enemy. Okay, let's just see what happens when we have this. So we're only going to collide with par enemy objects, which in this case is just the, sl is just the slime. So if I walk up here into the wall, I can walk straight through it, but I can like actually collide with an enemy. And I guess that works. That's what I wanted to happen. But considering that we want to collide with everything and not walk through the walls, what we would do is object, oops, collision. That should have a bracket on the end. That is done. We've cut the number of lines of code from whatever we had before to just 32 lines of the spaces included. And if we play the game now, you'll see that we can do the exact same thing. Like it, it worked just like it did before, or it should. It should work like it did before, and it does. Whew, that's, that's a good thing, that's a relief. Now, we also wanna do that for the object slime. Whoops, wrong object. We actually wanna do that for the parent enemy. Let's close this state idle script, we don't need that. For the parent enemy, we're essentially doing the same thing, but we're just going to be using target X and target Y. I'm very close to reaching my 15 minute time limit. I'm glad that I have imposed that on myself so that I can just get on with the tutorial and not talk too much, but I probably do. So here in the move and collide section here, we are going to take the target X, target X, so the local version of the variable, not, the, uh, not this one up here, the yellow text one. And we're also going to use target Y. And we are going to collide with uh, OBJ collision. Close that off. So again, we've cut out all of that extra code, which is basically a repetition, and we just chucked it into a single line. Pretty useful for when you're trying to, if you think about it, all of this code is just compressed into a single line. You've written it out, it does one thing, and you can just forget about it completely if you want. And there you go. It works exactly the same as it did before, which is awesome. Now, I'm probably going to make a couple more videos where we do directional movement for our enemies as well. And that's definitely coming up. I'm reaching the end of this video, but hopefully you've learned something about polymorphism. Um, it's extremely useful and we will be referring to it, we'll be using polymorphism more and more as the series go on. So don't think that this is something that you can skip, it's not. I will not be explaining polymorphism later. This is that video, this is that polymorphism video. So go check that out. Um, I do have a scripting, no, not a scripting, a spriting video coming up where we cre actually create something rather than this colorful dude. Um, so stick around for that, that's, um, that's super important, I guess, if you are looking for doing game art as well. But anyway, guys, that's all for me. That's all from this video. This is polymorphism. Hopefully you've learned something. I really do hope that you have. 
and I'll see you in the next video. See you guys. Bye.